Hello, this is Kabu. In this video, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to build this mushroom tower. This mushroom tower, many of you may have seen in my mushroom facts video. It's very simple. It's just piston controlled water streams that push up the mushrooms growing in here, sending them to a central point where they can either be collected by the player or carried along in another delivery system to whatever destination. The layout is very simple. There's a mushroom down in, uh, here at the bottom. On top of that is a layer where the mushrooms will grow, followed by another mushroom and another layer after that where they can grow. And this just repeats as high as you need it to go. It can go from the bottom of the map to the top of the map and it will work just fine. Um, the way, the idea behind it is the mushrooms from these blocks will spread down and the mushrooms from these blocks will spread up. So it will maximize the growth rate on this layer and at the same time allow this uh, water stream to harvest all the mushrooms there. It also, because these are spaced so much apart, allows for the growth potential, the maximum number, to be pretty high. Uh, in a tower like this, which is 25 tall, you can, or it's 25 growth levels tall, it's actually about 50 blocks tall, but um, 25 levels for growing mushrooms tall, it's it works out to be about four mushrooms on average, three or four per level, so somewhere between 75 to 100 mushrooms in a tower like that. Now there are two layout designs here. Uh, this is a 4x4 four four minus 1, which is used in this tower, and this is a 3x3 three three plus 1, which was used in my Mushroom Facts video. Did the same in principle. You just have the pistons toggled and water streams flowing out, harvesting the mushrooms and sending them to a single point. But there's a little difference in efficiency. The 3x3 three three in a tower like this with 25 levels will generate about 25 mushrooms in an hour. And this 4x4 four four will do probably about 30. It's not too much of an improvement in efficiency, but it's still a little bit faster. So if you don't care too much about space, go ahead and build a 4x4. Four four. It's not too hard to make the difference. It doesn't require that many more materials. But if you need a lot of horizontal space, then the 3x3 three three is probably better. Of course this tower is a tower so it takes a lot of vertical space but since it's so narrow if you live underground in a cave you can you can keep it pretty far down into the ground and you'll uh, be able to hide most of it. Alright let's go over and get to building it. So to start we want to decide where we want our mushroom and let's say we want it here so I'm gonna surround this with a ring of whatever material we want to use to build it. and. I'm going to use stone. You can use anything that's solid and opaque and isn't bedrock. Now, to place a mushroom, if we have the sky exposed like this, we need to cover it up. And to do that, we just build up too deep around that hole, put another block here so we can cover it, then we can place the mushroom. Now that it's placed, it won't pop out unless it gets an update, so we'll go ahead and cover it up before it can get an update. And now, as long as we don't break any of the blocks and let the light in, it should be fine. Now, to do the rest of the build, which is uh, ch first choose which direction we want the water to come from. I'm going to choose this direction. So we'll have our piston here. And from this piston, it will flow towards this corner. So if we want to do the 3x3 three three design, we would put our exit either here or here. If we do the 4x4 four four design, which we're going to build here, uh, just extend each of the, s the far sides away from that corner out by one. So you end up with a hole here and three more blocks on each of those sides. And that's the basic floor plan for the 4x4. Four four. Now we need to build up the wall walls around so we can put in the water. And to do that, just fill in two layers all the way around just build a wall and I'm filling in two layers and not just building a wall around the sides so that uh, it will stop the water because if I don't fill in this layer and it's dark enough a mushroom that was right here could spread down here so we'll fill that in just to make sure that doesn't happen because if we get mushrooms around the outside like that they'll slow down our growth rates overall Now time to put the water in, so let's block it off, 
and put the water in. As you can see, it flows just like the 4x4 over there. And that's our first layer. Now, the great thing about this design is it's really easy to make the next layer, and on top of that, you don't need any scaffolding to do it. Of course, you probably want some sort of way of getting up and down so you can get materials like a water elevator or ladders or something like that. But the fact that you don't have to tear anything down once you, uh, once you finish it is a huge bonus. So anyway, to do the next layer, it's very simple. Just cover up everything uh, exactly the same shape except for this corner here and the block where we're going to put our mushroom. And you can go ahead and put in the mushroom just like before, cover it up so it's it's dark enough. And then you can cover up the mushroom and do the rest. So putting on layers is very fast. As you can see, I've almost done two layers and it's only been a, a minute or so. And put in the water and just like the first layer. Now I'll repeat this um, two or three more times. I want to go at least four high so I can demonstrate the wiring. I think I'll go, I think I'll go four high. So I'll go two more layers up, and then I'll show you how to do the last level, the very top, and then I'll do the wiring. Also, uh, I want to talk about why I'm doing a four by four and, well, obviously I'm doing it instead of a 3x3 three three because it's going to be more efficient than a 3x3, three three, but why I'm doing a 4x4 four four and not a 5x5 five five or anything larger than that, um, it's because the water streams don't work out very nicely for anything bigger than 4x4, four four. and I'll show you what I mean at the end of the video after I've finished building this tower. Uh, they don't really work as nicely. You don't get them to flow to a single point unless you use multiple streams, and then using multiple streams requires more wiring and means you need to make your tower bigger, so it uses up more space. And this is probably a more cost-effective way of doing it instead of trying to make it slightly bigger for slightly improved rates. As you, I mean, five mushrooms per hour isn't that much of an improvement, and really, as you make it bigger, it's sort of a diminishing returns thing. So. Anyway, this is our last level. As soon as I finish this, I'll put on the top and then show you the wiring. So now the top. Okay, so the top, if you're going to have it exposed to the sky like this, you don't have to worry about covering up the edges. You can just fill over the piston here to stop the light and cover all the water to stop the light. And we're going to put the mushroom, one last mushroom on this block so that it spreads down. So we're going to have one more mushroom than the number of growth layers, but that's okay. Um, we, we actually would like that so that we maximize our growth potential, and that's all. So we just put our mushroom in, just like before. And we're done. So if, there's, if it's exposed to the sky like this, you can just you know, leave it as it is, stick some torches on it to keep mobs from spawning or whatever. But if it's underground and it's going to get dark, you have the potential of mushrooms growing up here, so go ahead and cover up all around the edge if it's um, underground, just so that you don't have the mushrooms doing weird stuff. And also, above the mushroom you want to cover up this 3x3 because they can spread from there. And that's all you want to do for that. Now let's get to the wiring. Oh, as you can see, all the water streams are flowing to this corner. Um, yeah. Alright, so the wiring is very easy. It's just a torch, some redstone dust, which will power another torch, which will connect to the two pistons. And we're doing this instead of alternating it like this, because if we had it every other block like that, then the pistons would be alternating on and off, which we don't want, we want them all on and all off at the same time. So we just pull out every other line from that. And it's very easy to do. Just first extend this out four. And you'll need some sort of pillar or scaffolding for this part, but it's not too expensive, so. All right. 
put a torch here, and then dust, and then off of that dust you can put a block, and then put a block on each of these pistons, and a torch coming off of this block. And as you can hear, the pistons just triggered, so now we'll go up to the next level. Um, here we'll just run the power up with a torch. Now this will be at the level for the next uh, output. We'll just run it the exact same way. And once again, you can hear the pistons fire. Now we can hook up a lever, switch it on, switch it on, and when we go over here you can see the pistons are now on and the water streams have stopped. I guess you could say that harvesting is off. And then if we switch it again, pistons should be off. So the water streams are on and harvesting is on. Now one last thing here. Uh, I didn't close this up when I was building it so I could show you what it looks like, but when you're building it, you'll want to extend these out a little bit more just so that you can have this closed up. Uh, if light goes in there, it will stop the mushrooms from growing. They won't slow them down, it will just stop them. Um, mushroom growth speed isn't affected by light level except for um, whether or not the mushroom can grow. And check out the end of my mushroom facts video if you don't believe me there. Anyway, so to be sure that your mushrooms will grow, just come into the very bottom and turn on your debug screen. And if you can stand one block below this water here, or where the mushrooms would grow, and you see light level 12 or lower, uh, that's the SL value or, and the RL value. If you see those as 12 or lower, then you're good and you don't have to do anything. So I can leave it just as it is. Don't have to do anything with that, and it's just fine. Okay, now I'll talk about putting these towers next to each other, like I did in my uh, Mushroom Facts video. So if I want to do that, it's very easy. Um, just build the towers right next to each other. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to clone them, or I guess mirror image them. So as you can see, it should look pretty much a mirror image when I'm done. I'm not worrying about the wall here because this is just an example, but... Right, so... Mirror image, just like that. And if you want to collect the mushrooms together, you just have them drop down. And you'd want to have... Uh, put the water stream right here. And I'm going to put it one back because... If you put them, two, if you put them three together, then they'll get a source block for me there, which you don't want. So you can just put... Water streams here, like this. Oops. So now, uh, let me close this off too. So now, if we have two towers, we want to connect them together. When the mushrooms get harvested, you see they can just fall into this little hole where they collect in the same water stream and then get pushed out, just like that. Very easy to do. But one last thing to note about uh, putting t towers together like this. Um, let's use red and brown wool. We don't want to use the same colored mushroom in the two towers next to each other like this, because if we have a mushroom, a red mushroom here, and it spreads, then the mushrooms over here will interfere with the mushrooms growing over here, and it'll slow down the whole operation, so ideally we would want to have a different color in this side and we can do that by either doing uh, brown mushrooms all the way up in one tower or red mushrooms all the way up in one tower like this but even better than that is if we alternate uh, oops, if we alternate red and brown and the reason is, this will give us even better rates, because if we imagine a red or a brown down there, and a red here, now 
Red mushrooms can spread to this row, so we can get some red mushrooms here. And brown mushrooms will spread to this row, so we get some brown mushrooms here. But they won't interfere with each other. So brown mushrooms don't care about these red mushrooms, and red mushrooms don't care about these brown mushrooms. So we can actually improve the overall rate. I mean, if you don't care about the mixing together. Now, this entire thing, I guess if you want to connect them together, you can put... Well, you could put this, make this as big as you want. You could just copy this over and then have the streams connect, or you could put four together and have them all go into one point and then rush out. But pretty easy uh, to do that. So that's all there is to connecting towers together and having dual towers like in my Mushroom Facts video or having multiple towers for multiple mushroom types. Alright, one last thing before we go, and that is uh, what about bigger layouts, like a 5x5? Five five. So let's let's imagine a 5x5. Five five. So let's put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, 4, 5. So the biggest problem with this is if we have our mushroom, it doesn't matter where our mushroom is, first of all. Um, let's just say we have our piston and water over here. So surround the entire thing, and then put in some water. Oops. As you can see, it doesn't quite reach the end, and to make it reach the end, we'd have to break these. Now it will push it everything off, but the problem is it doesn't all go to a single point like we had with the 4x4. So we can't easily collect the, the water, the mushrooms here. Of course, we could go down one more level and then have water streams to push them into a corner. But really, what's the gain here? Let's see, we've got one block, two blocks, three blocks, four blocks. So we've only gained four blocks for using all of that space. We wasted one, two, three, four, five five blocks here, and we have to make it more complicated down below to send, to funnel all the mushrooms to one location. So this is an, this is why it's not worth it to really make it bigger. Of course, if you use more than one water stream, you can get around that. You don't have to worry about it. You can funnel them all to one location, but it does get a little bit more complicated after that, and uh, you need to carefully place your mushroom block. But it also takes a lot more space, so keep that in mind if you want to try something bigger than a 4x4. Anyway, as you can see, it's a very simple build, just a little bit of repetition, and pretty effective. Uh, let's see if I turn this off. Oh, I didn't turn it off. Oh well. So, it works pretty well. Um, if you want to turn this off from the front, it's very easy to do. Just run a redstone line. Uh, to this block. Nothing special here. You can put a repeater there if you want, but it really isn't necessary. As you can see, it turns it on and off. But that's all there is to it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Anything else? Um, any suggestions? Let me know about those too. So, that's all. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.